Okay, so uh, the problem statement, uh, the, the problem we're trying to get after out here is that uh, we've known for, for some time, um, certainly uh, since the OIF, OEF era has taken place, that our adversaries are quickly catching up with us. Um, uh, access denial to forcible entry has been a growing problem for some decades, but certainly gotten a lot worse while we were focused on fighting a technological primitive enemy um, and focused understandably almost exclusively on that. Now, a, a cunning and persistent enemy, but technologically uh, primitive. Um, and what we see now is uh, the uh, anti-access problem has come to the point where we need to start coming up with new, new ways to do things. Um, and we think te technology is part of the solution to that. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I came in the Marine Corps in 1990, the year the Soviet Union fell. And really my whole experience, my whole guys my, of my generation, our experience is we're guaranteed uh, maritime supremacy. We're guaranteed air supremacy. We're the guys in the battlefield with the PGMs. We're the guys in the battlefield with the UAS systems and the cyber and the EW. That's no longer true. Um, you know, we see just as a, a primitive, a, an enemy as primitive as ISIS is now uh, flying UAVs on us and it's given us fits. Um, we're not used to being observed from the time we leave the wire to the time we return to the wire. Uh, so, okay, all that said, um, it's obviously our mission, uh, uh, along with others, uh, to maintain a forcible entry capability for this country. Uh, ultimately, you need to have that to be decisive. Um, and uh, with that in mind, uh, we decided to take a little bit of a new approach. Um, and what that involves is, number one, going fast. Um, the, the traditional time frame uh, that we expect from the time a technology matures to the time a uh, system is in the hand of an operator uh, is just too slow. Uh, with the accelerate, not just the proliferation, but the acceleration of technology. Um, so what we're, what we're trying here and what we're tasked by uh, General Walsh and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Burroughs, Dr. Burroughs, uh, about seven months ago was, I want you to go from a cold start, assemble as many of the naval warfighting centers and private industry partners as you can, lay out the problem to them in detail, uh, to, to actually to the scientists and the guys who bend metal, um, teach them the challenges we have with forcible entry, uh, rapidly accelerate as many technologies as you can for demonstration uh, where we can, you know, potentially down select others for further uh, evaluation and uh, pot potentially some type of acquisition. Um, so we did that. And uh, really the last 10 days um, has been remarkable in the sense that uh, I, I don't think we, even we didn't appreciate the value of having the engineers and the scientists and the technologists working shoulder to shoulder, because we had Marines from 1st LAR, from Recon Battalion, from 9th Com. Um, I had one uh, PhD from UNC uh, Chapel Hill. The money quote was, uh, God, I gotta get one of these recon sergeants as a pen pal, because I've learned more about what the nature of the problem is and how I can solve it in the last couple of days than I have in the you know, preceding months or years. Uh, so that's been f fantastic. The other thing is the cross-pollinization of the warfighting centers and the industry guys. Um, you would think they'd all be very close hold, but uh, it's almost been like a tech jam out here where you've got the guy from Dahlgren and the guy from Panama City right next to each other, and they realize that, holy crap, my payload is going to make your, or my UAS will make your payload perform better than your UAS. So there's a lot of, you know, cross-attaching. Uh, and that's been really fantastic too. So I, I think this model going forward, uh, if we can sustain it, is gonna help us go faster in the end. I think there are some technologies coming out of here, uh, emerging capabilities that are gonna get after the uh, the challenges we have with A2AD. Mm -hmm. uh, and overall, yeah, I mean, I'm biased, but I think it's been pretty successful. I, I, well, the robotics and automation are, are really uh, one of the, I think, the most promising areas. A lot of what is, I think, most promising is the, the secret sauce of the algorithms and the software. And even that's been modified since we've been on station, uh, where you've had uh, scientists or technologists observing field training and the challenge ahead, running back to the trailer and start writing code. Um, so I guess coming out of this, uh, I think there's been a lot um, potential shown with the underwater, unmanned underwater systems, uh, autonomous that do the hydrographic survey, mm -hmm. which is a very time consuming and very risky operation before an amphibious assault. Um, I think some of the promise shown for uh, un, uh, unmanned automated surface vessels uh, shows a lot of promise. Um, I think we're ways out from, you know, uh, programmer record, but I think uh, certainly it kind of opened up the realm of the possible there. When we start talking about uh, dispersed ops, dispersed lethality, how do we sustain dispersed forces in you know a Western mm -hmm. Pacific type scenario? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think that, uh, the, I mean, there's stuff that's ready to go today. Uh, you know, we've got these loitering uh, lethal munitions that a squad leader can control. You're putting PGM capability in the, in the hands of a squad leader. Um, uh, the, the ground robotics with the medium machine guns uh, are, are working extremely well. Um, I think that uh, just like in what we say now in, in urban, um, you know, going forward, the first one into the room should never be an air breather. It should be a, a robot with a lethal capability. Uh, same thing coming ashore. You know, the first wave today in this demonstration is going to be either totally autonomous uh, or um, replicated autonomy, like the AAVs today. We've got the kits that make them, uh, if not autonomous, remote, unmanned. Um, but uh, you just we hadn't, haven't hit the safety threshold to have them operating in close proximity to dismounts, uh, which they will later in the scenario. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something about the scenario today, too. What you're not going to see today is you're not going to see the 10 days of sausage making with the Marines and the scientists and yeah, technologists, which is really where we made our money. Today, we're kind of putting on a you know a daytime demonstration. We would never do an operation like this in the daytime. But if we did it at night, nobody could see anything. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to paint a picture in the mind's eye to our leadership of what the realm of the possible is, and not 10 years from now, but if we make the right investments much sooner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we, we need to have some good faith on our part. Um, these guys all came here on their own dime, both the warfighting centers and the uh, the private sector folks. Uh, and there's been a couple of pays to play. Uh, and there has to be a return on that investment. And not everybody's going to win coming out of here, uh, but we really have to make progress and make investments in the, in the most promising technologies coming out of this if we want to continue to do this. Right. Yeah, so this was a specific tactical problem that we wanted to get after. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say we wrap this up uh, and then we, we begin the next one and we might look at a different problem set like the challenges we envision operating in mega cities. And in that case, we might do, uh, you know, do essentially the same six, seven month model. And, and hopefully this time, not only bringing in the naval warfighting centers, but the army warfighting centers um, and uh, make it a more of a joint flavor because, you know, Navy and Marine Corps are the same naval service. It's not really joint. Um, and then, uh, you know, you'd be looking at a venue like the Mega Mount Facility 29 Palms or the, uh, the National Guard one in Indiana or maybe a combination of both.